Hello everyone. So today I'm going to show you guys how to get started on your texture project. As you can see, I have all of my balls laid out, at least kind of the basic designs in them, but I haven't gone in and done the actual shading. So to do that, I'm gonna use my set of drawing pencils. If you don't have a set of drawing pencils, you can use whatever you have on hand but I am probably gonna use a 2B just because I know I can get it somewhat dark because the B is a softer graphite, but I can also do lighter areas and I can blend with this as well. And I have an eraser. I'm not gonna be using this mechanical pencil. I have a ruler in case I need it, but I think that I've done enough laying out that I won't need it. And then I have my phone so I can look at some reference images. So it's totally fine to look at references, not of things other people have drawn, but look at some actual photos. So I am going to start with this Magic 8 Pole and I am gonna look at a reference photo. I have drawn out some of the major highlights and shadows, but for me, it's useful to uh, have just a reference photo. Uh, so to the work first from. texture that I'm going to show you is a uh, shiny and smooth texture. So with shiny and smooth textures, you have very gradual changes from dark areas to light areas. So there's really going to be a gradient that you're drawing in. So remember a gradient is anywhere that you're going from dark to light. So down here it's much lighter and so I will go in and blend a lot of this and I'm mostly using this side of the pencil. So see how I'm holding my pencil really flat? I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it further back in my hand and holding it very flat. And that allows me to use the side of the pencil as opposed to the tip of the pencil. And by using the side of the pencil instead of the tip, I am eliminating some of the streakiness, not all of the streakiness, but I am gonna go back in and blend that. But I am eliminating some of that really streaky mark that I would get if I was using the pencil in an upright position. If you have a blending stub, you can definitely use a blending stub, but I don't, so something on my hand. I'm just gonna go in and because I am using a softer pencil, everything's just kind of blending. And I don't know what that was. Sometimes you can go back in after you've blended and add in a little more pencil to darken some areas up. Which is what I'm doing right now.
Okay, so that is a shiny and smooth texture. And next I'm gonna show you guys how to do a rough and matte texture. So I chose to do concrete for that. And before I do anything else, I'm actually just gonna put a little bit of shading on this so that it looks like this is a sphere, meaning a ball, something that's three dimensional, as opposed to something that is two dimensional and flat. So to put shading on this, I'm just gonna again use the side of my pencil and then I'm gonna go in and just blend and I'm gonna clean up my edges because I did make a little bit of a mess. I'm not going to have as strong shadows and highlights on this piece because it is a matte texture, so it's not going to reflect a lot of light. So I may go in and just lighten this up. I don't have a kneaded rubber eraser, but if you do have one, that would actually work really well. It's one of those little gray, um, soft erasers. Okay. And unfortunately, I lost a lot of my brick. So if you notice, I drew my brick so that the lines curve as they get closer to the edge. And that helps to make this look like it's actually a ball, like it's circular. So I'm gonna go in, and I think I'm gonna do darker lines in between. So this is like a, some sort of brick or concrete with a darker fill. And I'm just going to darken those areas. If you find that you're getting a lot of pencil markings kind of spreading out everywhere, then you can just take a piece of paper towel and lay it underneath your hand. So because concrete has a rough texture, the way that I'm gonna create that texture is by just using the stippling motion and dotting in because that rough texture in concrete means that there's little holes in the concrete where shadows really don't, or where light doesn't penetrate, so you get shadows. And so I'm really just drawing in that texture and I may go through 
can just blend slightly with my finger and then go back over it. Otherwise, it's going to look like a pure white brick, and I don't really want that. So, this looks pretty close to being finished to me. I might add a little bit more shading down here at the bottom, just to darken it up a little bit. And so we have a shiny and smooth texture, and then a much matter and rougher texture. And then if you can see kind of scattered throughout here, this is gonna be like dripping slime. So this is gonna be another shiny and smooth texture. And this is plants. So it's gonna be more rough and kind of partway between matte and shiny. This is shiny and smooth because it is like a gem or crystal. This is gonna be shiny and rough. So it's like a pitted metal ball. We have matte and rough here with the cactus. The baseball is going to be again partway between matte and shiny and it's going to be both smooth and rough because the laces are going to be rough. And this is going to be sort of partway between matte and shiny but closer to matte with a rough like uh, basket weave surface. This one is going to be smooth and matte because it's fabric like a couch. Again I have another uh, combination of sort of smooth and maybe a little bit rough with the surface of the water in here. And then this is going to be um, mostly shiny and smooth. So I have a lot of shiny smooth surfaces, but I have a mix of all the different types of surfaces that are in here. <laughs> 